everybody. Welcome to another episode of Mike Likes. I'm Mike, and I really wanted to especially thank you because it's been a really long time since we've done any kind of astronomy video uh, between not having the equipment I needed and a crazy year at work and all sorts of uh, boring delays. Um, the, the drought is over, and um, today we'll be reviewing a ZWO C-Star S50 smart telescope, and I'd love to take you through it and kind of show you how it works, and um, we look like we're going to get a clear night, so we'll get some imaging done. So to begin our video, I wanted to show you guys the equipment that you get when you buy the C-Star S50. And this is an amazing deal for 500 US dollars and sometimes 450 US dollars when it's on sale. So it arrives in this, in this box. There's technically a brown box, but inside it, you get that box on the right. And it actually comes in this case. And the case is really quite nice. For a $500 smart telescope, you get this. It's not like a hard shell, like a Pelican case, but it's, it's good enough to keep this safe while you travel with it. It's got these nice little snaps that open, and let's open this here. It kind of pops open there. You can see I have the, the tripod that it comes with. I don't actually use the tripod because I have another tripod that I prefer, a Ciroi tripod, but this is the little uh, short tripod that it comes with, the leveler, and it also comes with this, which I'll show you guys how this works today while there's sun out. This is a solar filter that you put on. Very important to put this on. Otherwise, uh, you can really damage your sea star. You never want to observe the sun without a white light filter. So it includes one, which is just a nice touch. And um, this is the sea star itself. Um, you'll notice I have this tripod leveler made by Near, And uh, this, you know, you can always level it, of course, um, by eye, but it's very important to have a nice base level. So this lets you turn the wheels to get a level. And I can show you in the app later what that looks like. Of course, you've got your battery meter here, so it shows a full battery. If I hold this, it'll actually turn on and boot up. And we'll see how that looks here. So it makes this kind of boot up sound. It'll say powering on, ready to connect, and it's ready to connect to your iOS or Android device, and then you can observe. The entire thing is controlled by your iPhone or your Android or your iPad or Android tablet, I assume. And that makes it very convenient because, you know, days like today, it's 25 degrees out. Um, it's, you know, a nice 68 degrees in my home and 25 degrees outside, and I know which one I'd rather be in. So I leave the telescope outside. Sea Star's thought of a lot of things here. Not only does it have, you know, the solar filter and the remote Wi-Fi capabilities for observing, but it also has um, a dew heater built in so that it doesn't frost over or dew over in the summertime. And that's just so necessary if you live anywhere in the with uh, humidity, which I happen to. You get frost, you get humidity, it ruins your imaging session. Not so much with this. So I've gone ahead and I've got our arm open here. So the telescope's open. I've got our firmware updated. I'm going to go ahead and take my uh, white light filter and plug that in there and we'll go do some solar observing first. That's the nice thing about sea stars that it includes that. So you don't have to wait for a clear night. If you've got a nice view of the sun, you can take some solar picture. So we'll start with that. And yeah, this telescope's ready to go. So we'll bring it outside and um, I'll be in the warmth and it'll be outside and I'll meet you back on my iPad. So just really quickly here, guys, I wanted to show you what this looks like for solar imaging. So you can see I'm connected to my Sea Star. The battery's at 97%. It's got 38 gigabytes free. I think it has 64 gigabytes on the device, so plenty. Latest firmware on the Wi-Fi. We're gonna do some imaging. You see here we've got Sea Star solar system. Tap the solar system, sun, and Gives us some information about the sun. It knows obviously that it's above the horizon because it's the daytime. Go to the sun. So right now, the sea star is going to find the sun. It's telling me to install the solar filter, which I have, I have so I'm gonna say installed and shooting. And it's gonna find the sun for us. So no sooner than it does that, it finds the sun. Is the sun in the center? If the sun is visible on the screen, tap yes. I'll tap yes. Uh, I'm gonna make some slight adjustments here. So it says that sync succeeded. So we can actually bring it down just a bit. Bring it down just a little bit like so. Look at that. We're observing the sun. Isn't that so cool? And just like that, after about a minute, the sun is centered in our view. I can autofocus if I want to. And we'll go ahead and do that. See how it says that it's focusing. And if we were outside, we'd hear the sea star say focusing but it'll do it for us here. So we get a nice crisp view of the sun. It's actually a very blustery day outside. So there is some jitter on the scope, as you can see, but imagine we're able to view the sun. You can see the sunspots on the, uh, on the disc itself. 
And if I wanted to take a picture right now, it's as simple as using a iPhone camera app and I just take my picture and it's gonna save my a picture in my camera roll right there to review later. So this is, you know, uh, electronically assisted astronomy at its finest. And tonight, with a clear night, I'll go out and do some actual stargazing, but I wanted to show you guys the solar features first because it just makes it so easy and it's so fun to do. And it's a nice way to demo this. If you know you're having a party in the middle of the day, you can't wait for midnight, but you can go out if the sun's clear and take some pictures. So yeah, we'll be back this evening and we'll do some more uh, EAA. So we've got a clear night and I've got the sea star outside and we're inside in the warm house and we are starting our imaging session. Now you'll see that the sea star app is doing an initialization um, it's doing image enhancement preparation. And what that is in the background is that it's doing the kinds of things that you do in astrophotography that are time consuming and kind of a drag. Things like taking dark frames and bias frames to correct the exposure and reduce the noise and in general make the image prettier when you take the pictures. It's doing that for us. And it's really nice because no one really wants to do those things. And you know, there's there's ways to take these things where you have to put a white t-shirt over your camera and it has to face a blank wall so that it gets the right bias. And it's all done here and now it's about to auto enhance everything. And look, we've got our first star field. And once this is auto focused, we're kind of ready to go. So you'll see that right away, the Sea Star app is auto focusing our star field. And it's going to know because it's gonna make those stars kind of fat and wide and then it's going to make them narrow and find exactly where it needs to be. You can manually focus a sea star pretty easily through the app as well, but in practice, especially on star fields, it's really good. Sometimes on a bright planet like Jupiter or Saturn, you do have to help it along. It can get confused if you've got a lot of light pollution, but in reality, I mean, you can see right here that it's just doing a phenomenal job. And yeah, that's a pretty perfect star field right there. And it's going to refine it even so. So yeah, now that we're auto-focused, we can actually start live stacking. And um, you'll see how that goes in a second. Um, you know, you can make image corrections to brightness and all the usual kinds of things. So I've now started a stack on M45, which is commonly known as the Pleiades. It's a beautiful winter sky um open cluster and it's gorgeous it's got already at two minutes of stacking you can see some nebulosity in those stars around them and this is a Bortle 7 driveway i'm not in a dark site my neighbors have christmas lights up and it's a uh, really light polluted around here there's a costco not even five minutes up the road to give you an idea of how much light is in this suburban neighborhood but yeah it's doing a heck of a job you can see that the sea star by default is taking 10 second subs 10 seconds is about the maximum sub you can take on a C star that's on a standard tripod that is not equatorially aligned. Um, that's beyond the scope of an intro video, but yeah, you can equatorially align a C star if you're so inclined to take longer subs, but it's a more advanced form of astrophotography. You need an expensive mount that tracks for that and um, nothing that you have to do. But yeah, I mean, we're now two, two minutes and 40 seconds of stacking and the Pleiades are looking nicer and nicer. And as you're kind of finding out, the longer you let the sea star work on something, the prettier it's gonna be. And I'll show you some photos of what this might look like a few minutes into imaging. And then later on, we'll do some even dimmer objects. I'm 45, you can see with binoculars, but there's thousands of objects up there that you need a telescope for on the 50 millimeters of focal length. And you know, it's not a big lens, but it gives us enough. I've resolved up to magnitude 15, some of, uh, Oh, Uranus's moons, Neptune, you can kind of see a blur around it, and that's uh, Triton, so pretty cool stuff. Here we are seven minutes into the stack, and you can see some more nebulosity has come in. Um, one of the nice new features of the Seastar S50 app is that they've added that little magic wand on the right side there, and that will let you do AI noise reduction, and it really cleans up your image without having to use something like Cyril or you know, some kind of program on a Mac or a PC after the fact to clean up your images. For those who don't want to, you just wait 10 or 15 seconds and it comes out with some pretty images, which I'll show you now what those look like. So this is pretty cool. You've got the Pleiades here and you can see the difference between the exposure times and just a few extra minutes gets you that much increase on nebulosity and detail in the stars. And the more time you spend on an object, generally speaking, the better. 
Here's the Horsehead Nebula, arguably one of the prettiest objects in the night sky, in the winter night sky. Uh, this is the left star on the tack in Orion's belt. It's the leftmost star from where you're looking, and just below that is the Horsehead Nebula, and it's a dark nebula, and just absolutely gorgeous. And you can really see that if you put 35 minutes of time on it, even in a light polluted suburban driveway, just what gorgeous imagery the sea star can pan out. I want it to go longer, but then the clouds rolled in. So that's the reality of astrophotography if you live in a humid area. Those of you in the American Southwest, I'm very jealous. 300 clear nights a year, humidity in the single digits. It's an astronomer's dream. Unfortunately, the American Midwest is not like that. Here's a montage of Uranus and a few of its largest, brightest moons and Neptune and a teeny little blur that YouTube might not even let you see. That's Triton, Neptune's moon. And uh, yeah, you can see a 15th magnitude object like Triton, which is just so cool. And then to finish out the review, you've got the moon, which is what everyone will try first. It does great pictures of the moon. The moon is perfectly sized with the sea star. Then I did the challenge. I went looking for Pluto, which is almost imperceptible. It just looks like a teeny little star, you know, dwarf planet, was a planet, now a dwarf planet. Uh, thoughts may vary on that, but I had to use a star chart app to compare and contrast from two nights to make sure I was looking at Pluto, but sure enough, that was Pluto uh, a few months back. And the last one is a conjunction of Saturn right there in the top right and the moon, which is blown out because we're using the exposure for Saturn. But yeah, guys, this is the Sea Star S50 by ZWO in all of its glory. I think it's the best $500 smart telescope on the market right now. And you know, this is a segment of the market where there's always a new device. Every six months, there's a new announcement and they're all getting really good. But if you're in the market for smart telescopes where you don't want to observe with your eyeball, but you're good with a camera, this is a wonderful time to be an amateur astronomer because we're able to resolve stuff that would be unavailable to us without dark enough skies from suburban driveways. You know, I say it all the time. Astronomy occurs at the end of very long days when you're tired, when you've worked and taken care of family and children and whatever else you might be doing. And uh, throwing a five pound smart telescope in the driveway and leveling it isn't that big a deal. And then you control it from your iPad while you're home in your heated or air conditioned house. So if you guys like this review, uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel even better. I love making these for you guys. I hope to make many more and um, yeah, observing anything with the sea star is a lot of fun. And I hope to see you guys again soon. Clear skies.